this is the part that they cut off. Because it's, I'll tell you why they, it could cut it off. But this huge muscle has this form in it. That, that is the uh, uh, mitrid valve. And that's where the blood enters the heart and exits here out the aorta. Okay, so I have to look at the geometry of this, and so I did. And I found out that there is a geometry behind it. But that's why that circle is that size, because there's a triangle. And if I go back to that original form, which I'm not seeing, but anyway, you saw me, there it is. That triangle there makes these two circles. So I made that form inside. I made that form inside. That is the geometry duplication of what's inside the seven-sided form. So I thought, how am I going to make that move like heart? So I figured it out that I could make it move like heart. <laughs> That's how a heart moves. But then inside, the scientist said that inside this, uh, inside the center of the muscle, it's twisting. It's twisting. Well, how am I going to make that twist? If I go like this, then how am I going to make that twist? Monster. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it works. Okay. Got a little grasshopper? The heart is expanding and filling with blood. Now the heart, when it pumps like this, and you've seen them on TV, and you also see that they don't move, the heart doesn't move much, it kind of moves like that. But it has kind of a jerk. I don't know if you noticed that. You will from now on. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't move much. But the inside, how do you make the inside spin or turn? Because inside, uh, if I take the rest of the geometry, that's what's inside. When the heart is closed, those are three muscles that are coming together and make that little tiny triangle which works out with the geometry. So the, that triangle comes from the center of that other circle. <coughs> so you always go from the, the middle of the circle or the middle of this line and then you draw the from this line and this line. That's how you get that. And the divine designer, whoever did this, knew that, or something we learned. And that taught me that this was spinning in a certain direction. But how can I make that spin? Well, I did it. Now, it's going to take me a little time to get it to go. But the heart fills, okay, and then it contracts. And when it contracts, it twists, just like that. It's twisting. And then it, the blood is let out, fills, contracts. Opens up, fills, contracts. And what's really great is that there is a fifth chamber in the heart that nobody knows about. There is a fifth chamber. It's right there. And why do I say it's a fifth chamber? Because the doctors all say that there is about a 30% capacity of blood that stays in the heart all the time. Now the scientists say that the suction on the top of the aorta that pulls out the blood, it isn't pumped out. A real scientist says it's not pumping drug. It's being sucked out. And it's being sucked out at 9 G's. Now, 1 G is when you put your hand on the bathtub. When it's draining, that's 1 G. And G stands for gravity. That's one unit of gravity. Nine units of gravity. A man passes out on a jet plane at 6 G's. This has 9 G's. So how could it be possible that there's that much suction in the top of the aorta? How can you possibly keep any blood in there? <laughs> <laughs> that's not and why is that? Because when the heart is filled with blood, when it comes in and filled with blood, the heart isn't empty. So the old gets mixed in with the new. So here comes the new blood. It goes out. The new blood comes in again. There's some older blood right here. There's old blood here. And it mixes immediately with the new blood. So what it's telling you is that don't think that the old is bad. You need some old. You always need part of it. Everything can't be new. And the heart is telling you this because this is how the heart works. 
So this, geometrically, I was amazed at this. I cannot believe the designer that can do something like this. I just, the mentality is just unbelievable to be able to do something like this in, in our organ. That's working in our body all the time. And what's so interesting about this form is that the heart beats 72 times a minute. This is 72 degrees. The lungs are 60 degrees. All the veins in the lungs that spread out, they all spread out at 60 degrees. And the form is between fire and air. That's where this form comes. It's right in between a tetrahedron and an octahedron. An octahedron is air, a tetrahedron is fire. So the heart is worth warmth. And remember, it's sucked into one side of our body. And there's two chambers on this side of the body, the right side or the left side. And on this side, there are three chambers. That's because the heart takes up one. So many of the doctors think that the heart and the lung are one unit. If you look at this distance from here to here, it's 15 degrees. Okay, so, no, 16 degrees. Well, what has that got to do with it? That's how many times a lung, how times you breathe per minute. And the ratio is four to one. And that's ratio between this, this distance from here to here and from here to here is four to one. This divides into four. So the four not only in the numbers, remember numbers are form and forms are numbers. This is a number. I also look, well, how can this go on in the heart where there is blood coming from the top and blood coming from the bottom of the body? And they're spinning. They're spinning in vortexes. Okay. Rudolf Steiner said that at the top, our blood is spinning counterclockwise. Blood coming up clockwise. And where they meet, okay, where they meet is always a big clash. And in the universe, that clash is shown here. There's always a big clash. There it is. That's the clash where the two are coming together. Two vortexes coming together in opposite direction, just like in us. But this doesn't happen in our body. I couldn't figure that out. Why not? How can that, how can that happen? How can I bring these in opposite directions, come out, and then go the lung? They're going to find each other. Big thing here. They don't. So if I studied the heart, and studied the heart, and I found out that they turn. The heart makes the blood turn. And when you turn this vortex, it goes the same direction as this one. And then it spins in the same direction and goes into the lungs. So inside the heart, we have two vortexes coming together, one kidney into the other. And that's what we have to learn in the heart feeling. So we have to give to the other. Just like the heart does. That's what the heart does. The heart functions like this. So then I'm going to start the machine, but I need to fill it with water. And I know that I'm going to get help with that. Uh, and the reason I have to wait so late is because it's so hot here that my silicone melted came apart, it's got a big leak. But we put towels and stuff around there, and uh, so I'm going to talk while that, that's being filled. And uh, I built this machine for the express purpose to find out how the right ventricle works. I know how the left works, so the left works like this, and you saw how it works. But what about the left side? Everybody ignores it. Okay. I wanted to know how a vortex, two vortexes come together. This is the vortex. And when he fills that up, I'll show you, I will show you a vortex, and I'll show you how the heart goes in the vortex and how it works. <laughs> 